Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSE. This lesson, Redshift and the Big Bang. This video is suitable for GCSE students studying the following specifications. This topic was suggested by Hassan Tariq, RDM, Ellie Pallet, Blossom Hibbert, Connor Graham, MTAS Hassan and Sanjana Tasneem. Thanks guys. If you've got a topic which you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. Most of your teachers at school probably focused on what Redshift is and how it occurs before they tell you why it's important to us. But in this, the first of a two-part set of videos, I'm going to focus on why Redshift is important to us first. I'm going to focus on that first because that tends to be the bit which the exams focus on more. The reason Redshift is important is because it gives us an essential piece of evidence for the idea that the universe is expanding. In fact, it was our first piece of evidence that the universe might be expanding. Back in the 1920s, Edwin Hubble, who is the astronomer who the Space Telescope is named after, Edwin Hubble was looking at the light from distant galaxies. Now, light will be shifted, that is, the frequency of light and the wavelength of light will be shifted within a spectrum, depending on whether the source of that light is moving towards us or away from us. So if an object's moving towards us, the light coming from it will be shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum. Whereas, if the object's moving away from us, it will be shifted back towards the red end of the spectrum. And the faster the object is moving, the more the light will be shifted towards either end of the spectrum. So we call these redshift, as it's shifted towards the red end of the spectrum because it's moving away from us, or blue shift if it's shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum because it's moving towards us. At the time Hubble was doing this, everyone believed that the size of the universe was constant, it was fixed, and that it had always existed. This was known as the steady state theory. What Hubble did was he took his data about how the light from distant galaxies was shifted and he plotted it against the distance to those galaxies. Now this was relatively approximate, obviously we can't get out a tape measure and measure how far away a galaxy is, so there are some estimations going on there, but we've got a pretty good idea how far away galaxies are. What everyone expected, if the steady state theory was correct, was that the light, when we plotted it against the distance, or at least the red shift of the light when we plotted it against the distance, would give us a graph something like this. That is, some galaxies in the universe would be moving towards us, some galaxies would be moving away from us, and there'd be pretty much no pattern. When Hubble plotted the data, he found something much more interesting than this. When Hubble plotted his data, he got a graph which looked like this. This shows something which no one was really expecting that the further away a galaxy is from our own, the more redshift that the light is from it, at least as a general trend. Some things are a little bit above the line and some things are a little bit below the line, but overall, we've got more or less a straight line through all these points. And this tells us something really important, that the most distant galaxies are moving away from us the fastest, and that pretty much every galaxy in the universe is moving away from us. This was completely unexpected for most of the physics establishment at the time. And it took quite a while for physicists to accept this as a correct observation and to then start to make sense of what it meant. Physicists eventually came to the conclusion that the only way we can explain this idea of the galaxies getting steadily further and further apart is if the universe is a little bit like this balloon expanding that the galaxies are steadily getting further away from each other because the universe itself is expanding. This was the only idea which could satisfactorily explain what we were able to observe. And again, up until this point, no one had thought that this was true. This was a total surprise to people. Physicists, once they got this idea though, then started to ask some really important questions. And one of the most important questions was, what if we run time in reverse? What if we imagine the air being taken out of the balloon? What if we imagine the universe, instead of expanding over time, contracting and getting smaller and smaller? What are the logical consequences of that? The data pointed to one extremely surprising answer for physicists at the time. That the universe was indeed expanding and it had been expanding out from a single point for the whole of its existence. That it had not existed for an infinite amount of time, 
that it did have a finite amount of time that it existed for. And more than that, they could use Hubble's data to predict how old the universe was. And we've steadily got better and better at making an assessment of how old the universe is. Our current assessment is that it's probably about 14 billion years old. And it originally started from a single point and expanded out very rapidly, giving the universe which we see around us today, which is still expanding. This idea of the Big Bang was still controversial, and the redshift of light from distant galaxies was just one piece of evidence. Really, to convince everyone, we needed more evidence. And physicists actually predicted what the evidence would be before we discovered it. That is, they suggested that during the Big Bang, when the universe was expanding out from a single point incredibly quickly, there had to be huge amounts of radiation produced. Radiation which would spread throughout the universe. And it would be very high energy radiation, that is, gamma radiation. So where is all this radiation? Well, it turns out the radiation has also been redshifted. It's been redshifted more than any other radiation in the universe because it's been around longer than any other radiation in the universe. So what started out as gamma rays has been shifted down to lower and lower frequencies and lower and lower energies and longer and longer wavelengths. It started out as gamma rays and then it became X-rays and then ultraviolet and then visible light and then infrareds. And by this point, 14 billion years into the life of the universe, scientists were able to predict that it ought to be in the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum. No one, when they made this prediction, had actually gone looking for this. But at about the same time, and this was in the 1970s, towards the tail end of the 1970s, at about the same time, the people who were developing the first mobile phones were discovering that they kept picking up microwave radiation and mobile phones use microwave radiation to communicate, they kept picking up microwave radiation on their system. Microwave radiation which they couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And no matter which direction they pointed their antennas, they still kept getting this microwave radiation. It turns out that that microwave radiation which they were detecting was the initial radiation from the Big Bang. And it was coming from all directions in the universe at once. So actually, your mobile phone will now have a filter deliberately built in it to filter out the background radiation from the Big Bang itself. This radiation is called the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, or CMBR. Cosmic because it's coming from the direction of space, microwave because it's a microwave frequency, and background because it's coming from all directions at once. It's not being produced by an individual source. And this is something which really helped secure the idea of the Big Bang Theory. It was that second piece of evidence, that piece of evidence which we predicted should be there and were then able to detect actually is there. And now we know it's there, we've been able to map it. Uh, this is a map of the sky and it shows the background radiation, the cosmic microwave background radiation, as a result of the Big Bang. When exam boards write exams, they do tend to write the same kinds of questions each year. I've personally found that when it comes to redshift and the Big Bang and the expanding universe and evidence for it, that's one area where the questions are extremely similar each year. So what I want to do is just summarise what I've talked about in this video very quickly. And whenever you sit down and you do a question where they start talking about the Big Bang or galaxies or light that's been redshifted, or Edwin Hubble, or the cosmic microwave background, when they talk about any of the things which I've mentioned in this video, you need to make sure that you're looking out for places to mention the following things, because they will probably want you to mention at least some of these somewhere in that question. Number one, Hubble was looking at how redshifted the light from distant galaxies was. Number two, he discovered that the light from the more distant galaxies was redshifted more. The light from the most distant galaxies was redshifted the most. And that told him that the most distant galaxies were moving away the fastest. The word that you might see is receding. You've probably heard this term before when referring to someone's hairline, so I want you to think of mine. My hairline is receding a bit. It's getting further away from you. 
Now, obviously, it's not happening at the speed that some of the galaxies are getting further away from you, but it's still the same motion. So, think about my hairline. The galaxies are receding just like my hair. They're getting further back. Now, we then, from that, thought about what would happen if we reverse time. This is the third point which you need to focus on. If we reverse time, then all the galaxies would be getting closer together again, and we can imagine that they all started out from a single point and exploded out very rapidly. We call this the Big Bang. Up until this point, people had thought everything had stayed more or less the same. That's known as the steady state theory. But the steady state theory couldn't satisfactorily explain the idea that the eight galaxies were getting further away from each other. The Big Bang theory was much better at that. It wasn't quite enough, though. And so then we made a prediction that radiation from the Big Bang would still be detectable. This is the fourth point. And that radiation would also have been redshifted more than any other electromagnetic radiation in the universe down into the microwave region of the spectrum. And we've been able to detect it. And that's known as the cosmic microwave background radiation or CMBR. The Big Bang Theory, including the idea of an expanding universe, is the only theory that we've got which can explain both of the observations that I've talked about. The redshift of light from those distant galaxies, with the most distant ones being most redshifted, and also the cosmic microwave background radiation. Because it's the only theory that we've got which will explain both of these, scientists have come to conclude that it's the correct theory. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the Doppler effect and how that causes redshift. I hope that video really helped you. To see what else I can help you with, there's lots more videos to check out on my channel. Scroll down the main page there to see I've already sorted them into playlists to help you find the video you need. You can also check out my revision guides which cover everything you need to know for the exam. They feature links to my videos, revision tips, cover both foundation and higher tier, and, unlike a lot of revision guides, they also point out what you don't need to waste time learning. If you want to check your learning, try the Snap Quiz website and app, which allow you to identify which areas you need to spend the most time learning. Remember, this is the only YouTube channel which brings you the teachers, the textbooks and the tests all on your terms, on mobile phone, tablet or computer for you to revise when you want and how you want, even immediately before you go into the exam. All of these links and any others for this video will be down in the description. Lastly, it really does help my channel if you want to leave your likes, if you subscribe, or, if you know someone else who's having trouble, tell them to search for Mr. Thornton. Good luck in your GCSEs, everyone, and thanks very much for watching.